everybody! You are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid, and I am your host, Marla Martinson, and today we're talking writing, and I am with the amazing author, Megan Crane. Hey, Megan! Hi! So, Megan also writes under the name Caitlin Cruz, and she's the author of many best-selling books, including my big favorite, Frenemies, Names uh -huh. My Sisters Call Me, and English as a Second Language, to name a few. And I love what you say on your website. You say, yes, I write under two names. It's me penning the story, whether I'm wearing my Caitlin hat or my Megan hat. Yes, readers will see a lot of similarities in the writing. No, I don't get confused. I'm a Gemini. I like duality. And yes, I'm a Gemini too. And uh, it's, it keeps us pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need another name for the other things that I do just to have like, okay, there's two people here doing stuff. I don't have to feel so bad. <laughs> it's fun. Yes, exactly. And then it, it, you feel better about how you're constantly Ex being well, in your duality, right? You might as well name them. <laughs> I know. Well, you are one of the busiest authors out there. Can you um, tell us how you got started? I know you were an ap academic and you lived in England and mm -hmm. and uh, a big fan of, of reading. So how did you become this big best-selling author? <laughs> um, well, I, you know, it's really funny because I had always written. I wrote as a child. I carried around black and white notebooks. I carried the spy. Um, I was constantly keeping endless journals. I still have them all, by the way. Um, so sort of like, ooh, do I want to look at the seventh grade one? I don't think so. Um, so I'd always written, but I don't think it was ever clear to me that it was a career path. You know, I, I read a ton and I wrote a lot, but I didn't really realize that they were, you could do it. Like you could actually follow a path and become an author. So I thought the only way that I could spend a lifetime reading and writing was to go into academics. Uh, so I did that. I went, to, as you say, I went to England. I did um, some graduate school work there, and so that meant that I spent a lot of time sitting by myself in the north of England in the pouring rain. So I had needed an outlet, <laughs> and so I ended up writing then too. And I actually, although I'd written a ton, I finished my first book during that period of time, mm -hmm. and ended up sending that off to a woman I knew who I'd gone to college with, who I knew was an agent. And I knew that she had done this because another friend of mine had sent a book to her and had been rejected. And I knew that when she rejected the book, which was my expectation, she gave a lot of really good feedback. Okay. So okay. I thought, hey, why not? I'll send it to her and I'll see what she says and I'll get a sense if I'm even in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. So I did that and she rejected it but said if I would revise it, she would look at it again. And so I kind of said to my friend, well, I don't know about that. And she said, yeah, she didn't say that to me. <laughs> well. I revised it, I handed it in again, and she called me like, it's like the day after Christmas, I think, whatever year that was, and said, this is great, I love it, and sold it in April. And that was when you were living in England? It was, I had just moved home, so I moved home, I did all the revising and stuff in England, and moved home the January of that year, which I think was 2003. And yes. what, which book was this? English as a Second Language. Oh, wow. And where was home? Because you lived in New York for a while too, right? Um, I lived in the city at one point. I'm, I grew up right outside in New Jersey. So okay. I was I stayed at my parents' house for about six months mm -hmm. between leaving England and moving to Los Angeles, where I stayed for 12 years. So you have one of those stories where, all right, your first try, basically, you like have this hit book. I mean, you know, you... <laughs> You could say, not really. I mean, yes, I, I was the first one that I put out there. But if you think that you have to do, what do they say, 10,000 pages or something? I had written those 10,000. I'd written 4,000 pages, 40,000 pages. I mean, I'd written and written and written so much that by the time I actually sat down and wrote a full book, I, I mean, I had written quite a lot before that, and including my graduate work. So I think that I had just done a ton of stuff. So yes, in one sense, I sold my first book. But in another sense, I had been writing so many books for so long that it was maybe like my 15th. Okay, okay, awesome. Well, it was the first one that you kind of put out there and, and yeah, tried. Definitely. And then you say, um, I, I spent, on your website again, I just love this, I spent many, many Saturdays in badly heated bookstores throughout the greater New York metropolitan area, stocking up on the books of authors who would become auto buys in later years, immersed in all things romance languages. I read romances everywhere, in public, in private, and without fake covers to hide the titles of the books from view, because I'm a rebel like that. Uh -huh. For some reason, it took me a while to figure out that I ought to write the books that I loved the most. So it is, I think, I mean, writers are readers. You know, it's not like you're going to write a book without, you really have to know your genre. I think so. I mean, I think that people, people approach that different ways. I know people who 
write different sorts of genres, who read a lot of different things, maybe more nonfiction to sort of bulk up for their fiction writing. It just depends. I'm a huge romance fan. I always have been. I I really did spend so much of my life sort of crouched down, you know, going through all the little category stuff and bringing the stacks and trading in, you know, paperback traders all over the place. I still love those. I love when you find a really good used bookstore where you see the ton, you know, sometimes they don't really have romance novels. I love to see big category romance novel sections that are, you know, put in numerical order. I like, I mean, those are the best. I feel like it's like coming home. Now, so what I, you started to write was what we called, I don't know if they still call it this chiclet. I heard that Chicklet's coming back, but yes, that's where I started. Mm -hmm. And I love Chicklet, and and uh, me too. I was a big fan. I read the Harlequin romances as a kid because I had a, a girlfriend in the fifth grade, uh, Tara Cummings. I remember. <laughs> hey, uh, Tara, I don't know what happened to you, but hey, you know, remember when we we read those novels in her basement? She had boxes of the Harlequin romances in her basement. She probably got them from her mother, and we would read those. And then as I grew up, I I moved into the Chicklet, which was really fun. And then they'd said, well, that's not a really we don't like to, to be called that it's going to be called women's fiction and mm -hmm. so you know we yeah, and I think women's fiction there's lots of really yeah. great women's fiction writers out there for sure that's awesome. still happening but absolutely I went happy ending <laughs> and then you moved into so caitlin cruz is more back to the harlequin type it, caitlin cruz is a hundred percent the harlequin type okay yes she caitlin cruz is all harlequin presents all the time that's what she does <laughs> <laughs> and how many books have you written now uh, as Caitlin? Well, as, it, you know, together, Megan and Caitlin, both sides of the Gemini. Well, I'm currently working on my 52nd book, which is my 31st Caitlin Cruz book. Oh, my God. And it seems like yesterday when I saw you announcing you're going to be Caitlin Cruz, it wasn't that long ago, what, like three years or something? Or, or It was 2000. I sold to Harlequin Presents. I sold my, my book to them in 2009. Okay, so maybe five or six years. I, I mean, I don't know. So let's talk about for writers out there who are aspiring or maybe they're writing. How, what is your, because uh, so this is your full-time job. So yeah. what's your ritual or what's your day look like? I mean, how do you, do you treat this like nine to five and you have to sit down and write all day? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, it's funny because I'm, I'm sort of messing with our process right now. We just moved about a month ago, so I'm sort of settling into my new office, and I found that really hard. I guess I'm much more a creature of habit than I thought I was. That's not true. I knew I was. But, uh, you know, trying to settle back in. But, yeah, I like to get up in the morning, sit down at the desk. I like to, uh, you know, clear my email. You know, I get a lot of, because I'm on the West Coast, most of my email, business emails in by the time I wake up. Mm -hmm. So I like to sort of get some talking done then if I need to. I'd like to I'd like to start writing around nine uh, and then try to get some serious writing done, uh, take a break for lunch, do some more. I like to be done. I like to have my evenings to myself. So I like to be finished by a reasonable time at the end of the day. That's all what I like to do. Does that actually happen? I don't know. I spend a lot of time on Pinterest. <laughs> you know. And then what about weekends? Are you do you have you work work on weekends? I usually do. I don't like to. I but it's been a couple. It's been a couple really crazy years. So I've been working pretty much nonstop for a few years now, and I would like to reclaim my weekends for sure. So we'll and speaking see. of Pinterest, so procrastination seems like, uh, you know, even I was even talking to Kristen Harmel, who's a you know writes a lot of books and she's very successful, and even uh, Kristen who you know, can churn out these books, um, says, oh yeah, I, I deal with procrastination too. There's something about even if you love writing, it's like, gosh, once you sit down, it's like, um, I think my refrigerator needs to be cleaned out or... <laughs> I actually think it's good. I think that that's your brain working some stuff out. You have to, you have to work, you can't just, you're not a machine. You can't just sort of like uncork your fingers and the book pours out. You have to think things through. And I think Sometimes what we beat ourselves up for in terms of procrastination is actually your brain working some things out. And you think, why if I have 10 hours, do I spend nine hours staring off into space and being, you know, kind of a jerk about it and then the one hour writing furiously? But if you, you know, why can't I write that furiously all 10 hours? But I, I don't know that you can. I think that some days you can. But a lot of days you have to let your brain take care of its daydreaming. Right. And Facebook doesn't help and all these other things. I think it kind of distracts us. We're getting these met pings in our inbox and this and that. I turn it off. I, when, I'm, when I'm actually serious, I use a program called Self Control and I turn off all the sites on the internet that I waste time on. So anything from Facebook, I do all social media and then like book sites and I'll turn it all off. So I can Google things that I need to find for the book but mm -hmm. can't actually waste time the way I like to. And that oh, Self Control. I'm, I've never heard the, of this. This is awesome. 
called self control. It's it's very matter of fact. It turns your it turns off those sites, and you there's nothing you can do to turn them back on except wait. You cannot like reboot your computer. You can't do anything. They're just off. Uh, well, so, why you have a time? You put a time you want it to be off or something? Yeah. So I I usually pick about three hours, mm -hmm. and I turn it off. And then the trick is to remove my phone from my reach. Yes. So I feel like a crackhead on my phone, <laughs> but it's gonna take a little time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! And um, <clears throat> so, the books that you read now are you still you still love to read all the romance and all that stuff? And and I mean, like, how do you? I know reading helps us the brain to keep going and getting ideas, but writing like fifty books or people churn out a hundred books over the years. How do you get these fresh storylines? Well, it's so funny. I you know I think that the storyline isn't hard. Stories they come all the time. It's the actually sitting down and telling the stories that can be more difficult. Uh, because you know, love is as many people as there are on the earth. That's how many love stories there are. There's never any shortage of love stories to tell. You know, the, the way who people are and how they fall in love and how they face the intimacy if they face it, how they run away from it. All the, I think that's endlessly fascinating. And so I think there's endless permutations of how you can tell the story of how people get through all that stuff to reach their, their happy endings. And are your, uh, under Caitlin Cruz, are these like period pieces? Do you have them in different timelines as well? No. They are, uh, they're all contemporary romance, although the Presents line, because it's very high fantasy, can feel a little bit more like a historical cloaked in contemporary clothes. That's where you get your kings and your princes and your sheiks and your, mm -hmm. you know, made up Mediterranean island kingdoms and stuff. So it definitely can feel a little more old school, but it is, it's all contemporary. Oh, that, that is awesome. Well, and what tips would you have for, for people who, you know, it's interesting because the publishing industry has changed so much. Um, since the last what decade, you know, it's been get so now people can self-publish and everything because traditional mm -hmm. publishing deals are harder to come by, and you have to have, you know, if you don't have fifty thousand Twitter followers or this platform, you can't. It's hard to get a publishing deal. Um, well, it's always been hard to get a publishing deal. You know, I'm not sure that that's changed. <laughs> okay, you don't you don't think it's changed as much? They're still always looking for for good, but don't. But isn't it interesting how now they it's do hard, and I think it's hard to self publish too. I think yes, yeah. you can put it up, but then you're, you're used to the same issues. It's still discoverability. Right. So right. You don't have to wait for someone to allow you to to put your work out, but you still have to figure out a way to get eyes on your work. I don't. I think whatever wherever you are in publishing, that's that's the whole that's the whole deal. Trying to get eyes on your work. Right, and that's the part some people don't like. They're like, I just want to write. I'm an artist. I don't want to do all this marketing. And and yeah. marketing is probably more than uh, unless you're writing as much as you do. If you just have a couple books out there, or something marketing is taking more time than the actual writing of the book. I think it's just ongoing and ongoing. It's really hard. Yeah. It's really hard to figure out the balance and to you know you feel like you want to do something for each book, but you don't know what works. No one does. Everyone can tell you what they did, but they don't even know what necessarily they think. Maybe. <laughs> You don't really know. And I would say uh, when you're writing, don't write with that intention like I want a best-selling book and I want to make a, you know, a lot of money on it. You just write because you love to write and share your work and then things will come organically if it's meant to, wouldn't you say? Because I think a lot of people have that eye on the big prize. You know, they're thinking I want to... I think everyone would like the big prize. Yeah. I don't think that, particularly once you have a few books out there, of course you're thinking it would be fantastic to hit this list, it would be fantastic to have a summer house on the Cape, it would be fantastic to have all sorts of things. Wouldn't that be great? There's some shoes I have my eye on. Of course you'd love, and you'd like to make a living, you want to pay your bill. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that is the enemy <laughs> of creativity, for sure. You have to be able to wear another hat, that where you can think about those things in a different space from wherever you are when you're sitting down and actually doing the writing. And that is one of the biggest challenges, I think. Well, particularly when you have social media in your face all the time. I think it's very, very hard to create the space where you can just be joyfully in the story. Um, it's, I, it's a daily challenge. I, I, I struggle with that all the time. But you do your best. You figure it out. You have to get in there and just, again, just try to tell the story because there's nothing you can do about the rest of it. The only thing you really can control is the next sentence. Exactly. Yeah, stay in the moment and uh, let the creativity flow. That's a life problem for me, but <laughs> it's definitely a writing problem as well. So what other, since you're a Gemini, what other things do you do besides uh, writing? I mean, what are some of your passions? Uh, well, I'm a big reader. I love hiking. So we just moved to the, sort of the Oregon wilderness so we can spend a lot of time out in it. And so that's, that's a lot of fun. 
That's okay. like a writer's dream is to be like in the, in the woods or something and just yeah. hold it out there. And I have friends who live, I, I'm from Seattle area and I have friends who live up there who are writers and they're like, well, it rains all the time. So, you know, we're inside writing and, and it just seems so uh, cozy and just so writery, you know. Fire and things. Yeah, so we're waiting. I'm very excited. I've been in Southern California for 12 years, and I've just moved to Oregon. I'm looking forward to fall and, you know, fall colors and fall clothing, and the rain should come soon. It's just very exciting. Cold it, morning. It should be. It's in, in October, mid-October now, so it should be a little crisp there, huh? Getting that way. It's getting that way. It warms up during the day, but the nights are nice and cool. Yeah, because nice. here I am, still in Southern California, and 100 degrees today, October. <laughs> Terrible. And I'm going to jump in the pool later, dreaming of coming to Oregon. No, That's one of my dreams one day, to move back to the Pacific Northwest. So we'll see what happens there. But, uh, I love the Pacific but Northwest. That, that's great. You've gotten to live in so many different places. Yeah, I've been around the block a few times. I've been all, I've been all over the country, except for the Midwest. But I've been, I've been pretty much eh, just about everywhere else. Yeah. Well, and that helps with the writing. All of our uh, life experience, you can pour in there. So anything, anything you can do. Well, Megan, thank you so much for sharing all of your tips and your books. And I'll put all your links down there so people can find you. And uh, thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. Happy writing, everybody. <laughs>